How does God deal with the basic human need of hungerness? Uh, today, that's what we're talking about in an account where Jesus feeds 5,000 people. And uh, Lonel's got some other math to work out with this because we find out it's 5,000 men. I'm here with uh, Lonald. I'm Pastor Tom. We're at Sonora, California at St. Matthew Church. And welcome. And um, I think that we're going to start off, I think the best place is to put our cards on the table with honesty. Okay, because when I saw this text coming up, we have these texts that roll through the church, I thought, the feeding of the 5,000, I don't know what to do with that. You know, it's a miracle of Jesus, okay, we know that's there, we've heard it, and uh, God opened up, I believe, my eyes to some realities of that. And uh, Lana, why don't you put your cards on the table with honesty? Well, I certainly wouldn't want to do it dishonestly. So there hey, we go. No lying here. Here we go. <laughs> when, uh, when you first asked me a few days ago if I would be willing to stand in because of a, a scheduling difficulty or whatever uh, with whomever was uh, going to be doing uh, this with you, and I asked, what are we talking about? <laughs> and you said, feeding of the 5,000. The very first thing that went through my mind is, oh, boy, I've heard this, this as uh, I don't like to use the word story, but it's really an event. This is a historical event. When I heard that, my first thought was, I've been hearing that, I've been listening to that since I was a kid in Sunday school. What is exciting about that? But then, when I started reading again and doing a little study, doing a little... Um, uh, a little uh, research, I was just blown away with what the Holy Spirit led uh, into my rereading of the rereadings of the rereadings. Yeah, and, and I think what Lonald is saying is important, and that you know, for all of us, uh, for me and for him and for you, I think that what can God open up in your life? How can He bring you understanding? And He does that through His Word. And for us to look back at his word and to be willing to be stretched and to take a chance to grow and get rid of our own biases and say, God, what are you trying to say here? And so uh, I think for both of us, that's, that's what happened. And that's what the, we call it the liturgical year is meant to do. Is it's meant to get you off of your pet peeves, although I'm not off one of mine, and that is how does God fulfill hunger? You know, but in talking to you, Lonald, I think that you talk about the text being very important, the context. And where, this is where we were last week, which we didn't have a conversation on, but you picked up and you roll that context right into the story. Can you say something about that? I, I, absolutely, I'd love to. Um, it, I, it, again, I've got to tell you, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that illuminates the mind as we read, and which is so important for us to understand why as Christians, as believers in Christ, we need to study his word and read it and reread it and reread it because each time you reread it, the Holy Spirit will illuminate you with some other aha, which is important. The ahas in life are important. And in this case, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to start and I'm going to go through in a quick summary. Without a sermon. No sermon. No sermon. Quick summary. Our director says, hey, no sermon. No sermon. <laughs> but I, I started with, well, why did Jesus go to the, this area in the first place? So I started reading back and then I realized Jesus had just learned that his uh, friend, uh, someone who he admired, I believe, John the Baptist, he was the one who baptized Jesus. John the Baptist has just, had just been killed, uh, murdered, uh, in fact. And Jesus, according to the scriptures, Jesus uh, withdrew. And he told his disciples, let's go away. We need to go away. Jesus is probably, probably uh, suffering some, um, you know, some really tough struggles, grieving, the disappointment, etc. And so they go to this location only to find what is, we're told that there are 5,000 men there. In reality, as Matthew says, uh, that's just the men. That's not counting the women and children. So there could be 15 or 20,000 or even more people there. That's where I started. Right. And so you have this context, you know, and as a, 
you know, you're bringing this stuff in. Usually I look at a text and I see more than I can deal with. So <laughs> edit it out and, you know, okay, the context is the context, but let's deal with it here. <clears throat> but as I listen to you, Lonald, I think of Jesus and, and, and we are reading into this that, that the basic human response, if you have somebody murdered, is devastation and grief. That Absolutely. Jesus is being put under demand by the crowds who are getting connected with him. I, I know there are pastors who stood up in front of congregations when they're in deep grief. I know there are people who have gone to work in deep grief. And they're just totally sad and wiped out. And he's being pushed. And not only do we have these issues, and it's not like adding to the problem, but Jesus did what he does by sending people out. He sent out the 12 disciples. You go out and you bring this message. That's what God does. He multiplies. Like, I believe God wants to multiply through Lonald and through you and through me. Like he sends them out and they're eager to talk about their experiences and what they taught and how it was reacted to. And so he's saying, hey, we need to go away. You guys, you need to calm down. You, you, we haven't even had time to eat here. It's all demand, demand, demand. We got to get out of here and go to a quiet place and get rejuvenated. So when they arrive and they see these hordes of people, probably tens of thousands of people, not just 5,000. Again, I've mentioned that. Uh, <clears throat> the first things that happens is his disciples, who are also probably very tired and wanting to rest, they say, oh my, what are we going to do? It's getting dark. So there's no food. There's no place for these people to lay down. There's, what are we going to do? Let's send them home. Send them home. Tell them to go away. Jesus, seeing these people, has compassion. Now, we're told that. He has right. compassion. And he says, <clears throat> excuse me, he says to his disciples, uh, what do we have? And they say, well, we've got a boy with a lunch, and the lunch has some loaves of bread and uh, some, uh, some fish, two fish, five loaves of bread. And Jesus says, take that and start feeding. Notice Jesus says to the disciples, go do it. And of course, they've got that, huh? Are you kidding me? Well, right. And here we go. We're, we're bringing in the human reaction to this. We know the way things work. And Lonald checked out all of the other Gospels on this and saying, you know, Philip is saying, we don't even have the money to go buy enough of this stuff. And what is the human reaction? We know how things get done. We know if you want to eat, what you got to do to get that food to eat. But God has another plan here. You're right. That's exactly right. And it, it, there, we look at our life in terms of, okay, Simple. We got to get money. We ain't got enough. That's a problem. We got to go find a vendor. Well, we can go back to the town and find the vendor. But the problem is that uh, God has got another plan. That's right. And Philip was the one who said, looked and said, it, it would probably take a half year's wages, half year's, six months wages, just to give everyone here a bite. And I think that's important, a bite. And, and Jesus says, go do, just go do it. Start feeding. And he starts handing out the bread and the fish, and they start passing it around. And what happens? All of these people are fed, and we're told they're fed to the point that they were satisfied. Not that they just had a bite, that they were satisfied. Like a little sushi. He didn't, he didn't Jesus <laughs> just didn't give them a little bit of what they needed. He gave them all they wanted, all they could need, all they could eat, and then there was still more that they gathered up. Twelve baskets Leftovers. Full. Now, if we take it from my, my thinking is, is that we are born into this life with needs, and one of the obvious needs that comes up every day, which is kind of a nice little gift that God gives us with our biology, we need to get fed. We get hungry. Well, and the question is, is where does our daily bread come from? But I would go beyond that. We have other needs. You see it with the crowds. And why did the crowds rush in? Kind of sounds like the gold rush in California. Our needs will be met through gold. It we're rushing in. That they felt that their needs would be met or were being met by what Jesus was saying to them. Tell us more. Our wants as humans. Our wants are not always our needs. 
And we always, as humans, have doubt of what can happen. Uh, in this case, it, it illustrates, in this event, it illustrates that God takes the ordinary things in life and does the extraordinary things with them. Right, and, and one of the places that Lonald has pushed me with this whole understanding here today, well, even he's not a pushy guy, but, you know, I'm looking at how God provides for our needs. He says, you know, come to me, those who are hungry, that the need of hunger is there, that that need is meant to drive us back to the, are the one who provides for us to get fed. But usually what we do in this life is we find other ways to get fed, and we can get into that. But what Lonald said it, that I felt was important here was, Lonald, you, you, you said that God will go beyond what you ever expected. Yes. Not just, okay, I'm full, it's good, I'm out of here, my needs have been met, but God goes abundantly beyond what we could expect. The issue that I see with us as humans, now we're getting into my perspective on this, is that we go after to get these needs met. Where do we go? And that's not always God. That if we believe that the answers of our life will be in accumulating a bunch of cash, uh, we will find out that that won't be enough. I, I, that, now, I, I'm going to say that because I know that some people will say, no, I have plenty, I'm content. Good enough for me. And even say it with God. But where do we go? <clears throat> not to go well off into the sermon line here, but we have other emotional needs too. What makes us okay? We have a hunger to be something. We have a hunger to fulfill a sense of identity in life. I think this story here, Lonald, shows story. Event. Event. It's an event. <laughs> this is a historical event, folks. It's like people always talk about. This is a recorded horse historical event. But it's going back to God. Absolutely it is. It, 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 that everything is going back to God. That God is the pinnacle of our understanding. And what we tend to do in this life is we take the things that God gives us and we make those more important than he who gave it to us. That's right. In Zechariah. And, that, uh, and I think that will leave, leave us hungry. In Zechariah, we're told, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says Lord Almighty. That means that it's his spirit that we need to go to for our hunger of whatever we think our needs are or what we want. We take it to him. Doesn't mean he's going to answer it the same as we're asking, but he will answer it, and it'll be more than we could have ever even imagined. Yeah, and you can see the fish. You can see the loaves. Where's God? I don't see God. He's inviting us to put our trust in something that we cannot even see. That's right. That's what faith is all about. But, you know, I mean, let's talk fine foods. I mean, I think one of my favorite foods is oysters. I can see them. I can taste them. I know what a good fried oyster can be like. Oh, and I know a good oyster in the half shell. Okay? I know that stuff. So why not make the tangible in life what we want to put our ultimate trust in? Show it to us. Let us feel it. Let us see it. Let us taste it. Let us uh, let it hit the senses. Where's God? What we hear here is there's a God behind all this stuff. Absolutely. And I, and I do not want to leave this out because this is where I think the mystery of God comes together and how God opens up our minds. It's through what Jesus Christ gave to us. That's with right. his grace, with his love and mercy. We saw it last week. We didn't do John the Baptist. Hopefully I'm not sermonizing here, okay? But we saw it last week with uh, that God uh, uh, provides for our needs uh, as making us his adopted children. He says, I am coming to pick you up. You are now my dear child, and I am your dear father, all because of what Jesus Christ has done. We're pointing at a cross here. I'm not right. sure we get it on the camera. But that's, yeah. But there, there is where the needs of our ultimate needs of our life are felt, because there we're in a relationship with God, and there we can trust in the God we do not see. And it, it requires our obedience as Christians, our obedience uh, and sacrifice. And, you know, God delights 
uh, in the humble and the insignificant people. So that leads us to we need to follow. We need to follow. Um, no matter how insignificant we feel we are, we're told we all have special gifts. We all have special abilities. We just need to know those and then start working on them. And, and well, and I'll, I'll say this, that we, we, we want to be significant in this life. Where does this come from? That's it comes hungry. from the, yes, it comes from God who came to us and said, I value you. You are my dear child. It is from that platform of the fact that we are loved, we are forgiven, even when we foul up, and even when we eat bad food, which food is that uh, uh, is not where God has chosen to fulfill our needs. It's just a physical thing. It's a, it, 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 but it's important. Yes, I mean, it Jesus is. says, pray for your daily bread. That's right. So we get our needs met uh, through our God who loves us. Bring, and, and what I see going on here, too, because I would be panicking if I was in this story. I would be thinking, man, we're in trouble here. I, these people got to get fed. And uh, this anxiety. And how much of us in life, it, we are full of anxiety uh, because we're not sure. You know, and I brought up earlier before we started that the roof of this church is 20 years old. And I look at it when I go get that mail out there, and I see the pitch on it, and I see the bid that someone's going to give us on how, what is it going to take to get up on that pitch, and how much stuff are we going to need, and you're telling me, Lonald, no, God, God will deal with that. Typical human reaction and right. thinking, this is too big, I don't know how we're going to deal with it, I'm, I'm just doubting everything. I can't believe how we'll be able to deal with it. It's overwhelming, Lord. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I got two shingles here. Come, and we forget. Come shingles. <laughs> put, we'll put them on the roof. <laughs> we forget. We forget. Take it to the Lord. Uh, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 7, it talks about be strong, be courageous. Yes. Have well, Jesus faith, does this Have the too. trust. And, 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 and we're told that God will answer. We'll be prosperous. He'll answer the prayers that we have. I, I think, just following what you said just a moment no. ago, the, the, the disciples being, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine what it would be like to be on some hillside somewhere in front of a crowd of thousands of people who have no food, no place to go. No, and, 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 and I'm telling Jesus, well, I wouldn't tell Jesus anything, but... I, I might. <laughs> no. What are we going to do? You need to take. You send them home. Send them home. And, and he looks and says, "Go feed them." <laughs> what? <laughs> Go you feed know. them. <laughs> With what, Lord? Well, what do we All have? Right. Well, we've got a small boy's lunch, a couple of fish, some bread, and he says, "Okay, take that and start working." And my mind even goes to, "I wonder how that happened." I mean, all of a sudden, I'm certain there wasn't a big truck that just dumped all this food on them. My guess is when they went in the basket and picked up a fish, another, ba another fish appeared. And that just didn't stop. Well, I didn't think of about it that far, but yeah, that's because that is the miracle. Right. And that is what right. God does is that, you know, there's more than we could ever imagine. And I think that, you know, let's going back to the disciples, going back to the crowds. I mean, everything is there. We all understand. You get hungry, you get food. If you're hungry, you need food. Not enough food. Where's the answer? God will meet our needs. See, this is the key of life. To me, uh, the, well, the key of life is what God has done bringing us into relationship. But God is behind everything. Absolutely. Everything. The environment we live in is tyranny. I mean, we're here in the summer. I think we're in one of the hottest summers that ever since I've lived here. We have something called PG&E in this part of the world. And you, uh, you, you want to run a compressor, they got a price for you. Not like Phoenix or I don't know what else is hot if the people are in the Middle East right now. Death, uh, Death Valley. Death Valley. Well, that's the hottest place on earth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we know how we get our answers, the answers where they're met as humans, but God has something else. 
He is behind all things. He is the one who takes care of the needs. Now, I go this way with it, okay? When you know that God is behind these needs, that you don't want to deny, we have needs, I'm going to eat today, our sense of anxiety can go down. Yep. That it, 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 just the idea that God will provide and have a sense of peace about that yep. is what God would want. God does not want us to go through this life afraid. No, he wants us to have, live this life with joy and to live it abundantly. Okay. Yes. That takes faith, trust, because we go through some hard times. We lose people whom we love. Sometimes circumstances may force a bankruptcy on us. Those are all physical things. And God can, uh, uh, God can address those. There's no question about it. But we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and uh, not let our faith uh, be shaken. And we'll be taken care of just like Jesus tells us, a promise. Okay, now I want to challenge Lonald here today. You don't know what I'm going to tell him, but, you know, this is a Lonaldism. Well, Lonald, I, I, I don't Lonald, know what that means. I don't know what that means. One of the sayings you say, if it is predictable, it is preventable. Yes. And I'm seeing, okay, the teaching's going on, people are coming through, what do we know that's going to happen out there in this desolate place? Well, I don't think that that was uh, de de pre predictable. They're going to need to eat. That right. is uh, predictable. Right. And how, what is going to prevent that from happening? How can we prevent that from not happening? With our, we can't prevent things like that. But we can have the faith to know that they're going to be taken care of. Those disciples had the faith of Jesus to follow him. They didn't know. It wasn't predicted that there are going to be, well, at least 5,000. But they're probably going to be closer to 15 or 20,000 people there. Uh, if, you had, if they had known that, I question, I wonder if they had really followed him anyway. Right. I think that, that there is some unknown, you know. And like when we pray in this church, one of my prayers lately has always been, God, we just want to hand this church to you. Yeah. And what is God going to do with us? We don't know. But the thing is, in an unpredictable world, we want safety and we want control. But God doesn't always give us that, but he gives us his presence. And we're seeing here a, 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 an account of how God met those needs. Right. And I'm hearing in my mind right now rattling around. It's been rattling for some while with this. The, all the times Jesus is saying after the resurrection, do not be afraid. I will be with you always. God takes the ordinary things and does extraordinary things with ordinary, humble people who listen to him and are disciplined and trust him with their faith. That's how we address this. I'm saying that God's just doing it anyway without the ifs in the story. And I, oh, I, I, I said the story, the event. Okay, he, he's doing it regardless of their faith and anything else. He just plain right. out there taking care of. And he's letting the disciples get a look behind the curtain where all these things are coming. That's right. It was not on a condition of those people and what they were doing because they were listening while they were gathered. It's not on the condition that these disciples, if you guys only believe, I will take care of the food, God does it. And you know, if I can just add a, a, a thought there, with, with follow up. Okay. That's what's so Im absolutely, so incredibly important for believers in Christ to fellowship and to meet with one another because we encourage one another. We strengthen one another. We build one another up. So I like this. You're bringing in more stuff. I like it. Come on. Long, we stop. build stuff up <laughs> because we're all human. We all can be discouraged. We can all start doubting. And when one brother or sister in Christ sees that doubting, you build them back up. Because to not do that causes, creates the vacuum to suck faith right out of someone. Well, just like our church roof. And you're yeah. bringing it in with me. That and church say, you know, God, you. <laughs> when, when God knows it's time, he'll take care of it. Right. And so, yeah. It, it, but this is, this is the life that God wants us to have. That he satisfies our need for hunger, and I think he satisfies our need for hunger and insecurity. 
that we, we can be insecure with the things that we have, and he's telling us it's okay. And I will say this to everybody. Look, all of these things are possible in our life because of the mystery of what happened on that cross, that God loves us, God forgives us, he calls us his children. When we doubt, when we struggle, he says, I have got you. And he gives us these stories to build us up. So I want to say, uh, you know, that you hear Ronald and I talking about our faith today and, and how God is helping us to grow through this stuff. God will do that with you too. Continue to go back to the scriptures. Be challenged in your life. Be challenged not just by going back to the scriptures, but how you deal with your everyday life and the problems here. And no matter how insignificant you may feel, you have a special calling. You have a special talent. Trust God. When yes. he suggests to you, try this. Or somebody approaches you and asks, hey, would you consider doing this? Stand bold. Stand strong. Be courageous and say, yeah, I'll try that. With discernment. And watch, <laughs> watch God do what he says he'll do. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you being very, with us. Come much. and see us again next week uh, as we continue to look at different Bible passages. And uh, if you want to check out our church, you can do that on our website. Perhaps you're seeing this conversation on the website uh, and other places to see us. But anyway, God's peace be with everybody on your journey. Take care now.